Hey, you know, welcome back. Ash your knuckle boys in the crib. <clears throat> What's up, man? Y'all ready for this weekend? Oh, uh, no, I have to work all weekend. Unfortunately, <laughs> me too. The movement. It's been a while since I missed one. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, I'm gonna struggle through. I'm missing this one for sure. I mean, I'm gonna enjoy the violence without y'all, I guess. It's been a while. It's been a while. This is going to be one that I'm going to have to get off work and hopefully not fall asleep while trying to catch up. Well, I'm definitely going to be asleep. I'm going to have to catch the replay or something because this weekend is will not be viewed by my eyes. I'm sad. Very sad. I mean, that, that is sad because with the lackluster month that we've had of fights this is actually gonna be a great card this is one i've been looking forward to for a while i almost feel like they made the last couple just boring just so my mouth would be watering for this one yeah they'd be uh they'd be teasing you you know what i mean right well speaking of the lackluster fights we could talk about well actually we don't even really Got to talk about it. We could just... What do you guys think? Was it controversial, the stoppage of Volkov and Rosenstruck, or no? I vote no. Um, I just well, literally watched it, and I, I vote no. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I mean, it seemed fine to me. It was a legit stoppage. Yeah. He was going the same way that he did against uh, Francis a few years back. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to his knockout that he had of um, Overeem. Overeem wasn't dead. He just was stunned. He he got up and was complaining the same way he was. So, I mean... I say it's all in the body language. The body language of when he was against the cage and he was getting lit up. He kind of looked like he was about to fall forward. You know, it might have been an escape tactic in his mind, but he looked like he was about to fall face forward for a second. And Herb Dean saved his life, so he just kind of stood up and he was like, oh, I wasn't out. So he was doing the smooth criminal lean? Is that what you're saying? Right. You're doing the Michael? That's what what I'm saying. (laughs) Nah, man, it's my move. What you mean? I'm... I think Herb reacted to the body language, and I think he was right. Well, speaking of Jarzinho, it seems like this guy, once he gets one of those top five guys, it's a rough outing for him. So you guys seeing him doing anything or just being like that middle-of-the-road gatekeeper guy? It's heavyweight. He's always going to be a contender there. Oh, yeah, I mean, for sure. the the unfortunate part is he has two of his losses. Two of his three losses are to young bucks. So he has he more can't, than three losses. They haven't updated the site. Yes. Well, oh, they haven't updated the last fight. A week later. Yeah. Because <laughs> he lost to Blades. Oh, Nagano. Gan, Naganu, and now Volkov, so it's four. Yeah. They lying. So champion, interim champion, future champion, and Bellator champion. Okay, people he hasn't fought is uh, Stipe, Tai Tuavasa, and Tom Aspinall. Has, he hasn't fought Derek Lewis either. You see him beating any of those guys? He has a chance against Lewis. Um, I lean towards Aspinall. I lean towards Stipe. All right, he's struggling top five, period. (laughs) So you're saying his only two options maybe is Ty and Derek. Ty and Derek, but they have the same chance of outcome. It's the same fight. What do you think, Brian? Derek. That's his only chance at 
beating a top five guy? Well, Espinal's not even top five yet. Yeah, I, that's why I didn't consider him. The, the only the only matchups that I see that look um, even competitive is maybe the Tui Vasa matchup and maybe the Derek Lewis matchup. But other than that, I can't. I mean, he's lost to all the other guys that we mentioned that that could be mentioned in the top five. Well, I mean, it's not like he's losing by getting out grappled or something else. He's losing, well, Serial, I believe he just put on, like, it was like a hard sparring match with them two. He just yeah. couldn't do nothing. But he fell yeah. into that style of Serial gone. Yeah, he, he let Serial play his game. And Curtis Blades just, he proved his point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Blades, he's I'm telling you. If he figures out everything, he could be a great champion. Yeah, he he's he's really young, and he does have all the tools to be a long reigning champ if he can put it all together. That's the tough thing, though. Can he put it all together? You gotta get those puzzle pieces. Can he? Well, then you got John Jones in the mix sooner or later. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. He's, he's younger than I thought. Who, John Jones or Blades? John. Mm. How old is he? 35. He looked 35. Mm. <laughs> he looked 30. <laughs> no, I mean, sorry. you got to remember, he was like youngest champion for the longest time, wasn't he? Man, that was back, back in the day. Yeah, a long time ago, but he was still the youngest champ until recently, I think. Who who broke that record? I thought he still maintained it. Maybe he is still the youngest champ. I can't remember how old Rose was when she got the championship the first time. Speaking of Rose, how does she go from beating Whaley and Ioana by knockout and then losing to Carla? Sensational. Because she forgot how to, or she forgot to actually be in the fight. She she played fucking turtle defense the whole damn time, and never actually sh- did anything. So she literally lost the two takedowns. You know what? Do you think that Carla just might just have her number? That's her Buster Douglas. I I guess. I mean. Everybody has sometimes it just be like it just be like that sometimes. Everybody like, I don't, matchups. I don't want to give her that credit though, because like the first time, one hundred percent, Carla had her number. Rose, you know, put up the wrong or just got beat in that fight. This fight, neither of them were actually in the fight. They were all just, they were both just kind of dancing around each other, playing defense pretty much the whole time. The only difference between the two of them is Carla got aggressive and took two takedowns. At what point, though, do you give credit to the person who won? She won twice. Like, it's not like it's some fluke. She had five rounds. I I give her the credit for winning in the sense that I don't think it was a robbery or anything like that. But... There's certain fights that you just go, hey, no one was actually in that fight. This one, the Derek Lewis versus Naganu fight, stuff like that. It was like, it was almost like neither of them really wanted to be there. They were all too cautious. I outside of Pat Barry, I think I'm Rose's biggest like supporter, <laughs> and I wanted it for her, um, but you know. It seems like I, I know that I get a feeling every time she matches up with Carla that I feel like she's gonna lose. Yeah, I felt like I felt that way the first time, and then going into going into this one, I felt that way too. I'm like, why do I feel that way? I'm not even involved. Because there's only one person that you've ever seen purely dominate Rose, and that was Carla. And I expected a more aggressive Carla too like the only thing I hate about the the result of that fight is that Rose is the only one getting all the 
bad publicity from it. And I know that's because nothing, nobody really expected anything from Carla. Carla just does not have the fan base. But, and everyone loves Rose. But Carla deserves some hate for this too. And I know that a lot of people are going to consider her not the real champ just because she wasn't really in that, because of the way the fight went. But, yeah. Well, well that, that division's probably about the... I don't know. I don't know who's going to be the next contender for that title in that division. I well, never wins the fight team. this weekend. Nah, yep. you still got uh, Rodriguez. Nope. You think she'll get uh, leapfrogged if Joanna wins? I don't think there's an if. Okay. Yeah, I don't so think there's up. an if. So I don't think there's an if. The, due to the popularity of Ioana Young Jacek, I mean, she's outside of Valentina and, um, you know, well, I guess you can. She's a very, very recognizable champion or former champion. She has an entire country of Poland. And if she were to pull up, pull off like a spectacular win tomorrow night over Whaley, she gets the shot. In my opinion, and you can flip that around to Wei Li. She got the whole country of China on her side. It's a pretty big, country. and we all know that. Like, um, they the the UFC tends to lean toward the needle movers. Yes, they do. And that's so. If Wei Li were to win win in impressive fashion, I see two things happening. One. Wei Li will get a champion, a title fight, which I think she will completely fucking obliterate Carla. Yes. And um, I think that'll be the last time we see Joanna in a cage. If if Joanna loses that one, yeah, I agree. I think that that's going to be the last time we see Joanna in a cage. In all honesty, um, if Wei Li wins that, well, I mean, either one of them wins, they're getting the title shot. Period. Like Rodriguez. I love her, and I want to see her fight for the title, too. But she just doesn't have the name backing there. <clears throat> and She'll probably fight I'm, Rose. Actually, that's a good fight. I'm, I'm 100% down for that. Put that fight next, and then... Because I say Rose is two wins from a title shot again. A rematch. I don't know if she needs two. Um... Given that she's the former champion, she like literally just lost. If she beats Rod, uh, if she beats Rodriguez, she get. I, I can see them giving her another a title shot if she can beat Rodriguez. Now, if she loses, then yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a road back. So, she she's she has so much star power as well. Like, um, she's. I would say she's pretty beloved in the MMA community and like in the mainstream. I think Rose is pretty. Um, She's a welcomed contender. So, like, she, even though she's, I mean, she was just champion uh, a month ago. So, right. if you, I mean, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the automatic rematches anyway, but mm -hmm. I think one fight, if she can beat one top five, top three person, I don't mind them putting her back in the mix for the title at all. However, for this current title that's being held by Carla Esparza, I'm leaning Wei Li in this matchup with Wei Li and Joanna. I just don't think Joanna took a lot of time off, and that makes me believe that she was looking for other options outside of fighting and healing injuries. She's a popular girl. Um, she can do a lot. She can model, obviously. I mean, she, she's already doing that. Yeah, and, I don't think she's already doing that. Right, yeah. She can. She's, she has so many other options besides uh, fighting in a cage. And I don't know where her her hunger level is, but she's the ultimate competitor, former champion, and she has it in her. We've seen the dog in her. I mean, in the first Whaley fight, fuck, man. She, I think she won, even though she looked like complete shit at the end of the fight. She... Had the elephant man head, <laughs> right? And but she still, you know, put up a war. And, and at that point, Wei Lee was the toughest looking thing on the planet in that division. Like no, she looked unstoppable 
before that Joanna fight, and Joanna kind of made her look a little bit more human. Yeah. And I I don't know. It's just, it's hard for me to say they're going to throw Rose right back into it after just one fight. I think they want Rose to probably fight her and Mackenzie Duran. And then that's probably when they'll give her the title shot again. But you're right, though, because I think both me and you will agree that no matter who wins out of Wei Li or uh, Joanna, that they're probably going to get the rematch. And bo- both of them, I think, beat Carla. I don't think Carla holds the championship after her first title defense, to be honest. Um, so I think... Those are both good matchups for Rose right off the bat. She has two wins over both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Whaley will definitely destroy Carla. That wrestling will not work. I don't think it'll be good enough. Just due to the fact she's been training with uh, Triple C. So who and Whaley's not going to sit back. Yeah, she's she's going to try to take her head off. Right. And we already seen the outcome of Joanna against Carla Esparza, and I don't feel Esparza has leveled up enough to be able to get through all that. So we'll see. I could be wrong. We'll see what happens. I, I say that Scar runs deep. Oh, yeah. You don't take a beating like that and it's- willingly walk in the cage with them again. Imagine that though, if it's Johanna, yo, you, oh my God, you know what I'm talking about Polish power lady against Carl. Johanna champion. Yeah, what year is this? The boogie right. woman, right? The boogie. It's the woman. rerun. What year is this? Like, <laughs> what year is this? Same. They said that. Uh, they said that we need a reset, so we're going back to the beginning. Yeah, like, what year is this? <laughs> And I believe uh, Joanna's the longest reigning strawweight champion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember how many defenses she has, but she definitely had the most. Definitely. Because Rose, what, she defended it once, then lost it. Right? Uh, yes. She, wait, who who she defend against? Joanna. She she beat Joanna, defended against Joanna, then she fought. Yeah, I'm I believe she now. fought uh, Jessica Andrade and got dumped on her head. Yeah, then she fought Jessica Andrade, got dumped on her head, then got her title back. No, 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 no. She fought Andrade again, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I mean. That's when she got. Oh, did she not get her title back during that fight? No, 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 no. She beat Wei Li. We saw it. Right, right. That's right. Because Andrade had lost her title to Wei Li. Exactly. So, yeah, they got hurt. She got a rematch. She won. That's the timeline. Then she defended it again against Wei Li. Once. And it's crazy how it goes, mm-hmm. right? She could beat it's like the heavyweight division for her. She could beat the title holder clean. But when it comes to defending the title, maybe they should do no more runbacks for her. You know what I'm saying? Well, she's the the king of rematches until this last one. That is true. She's got the fucking... She's got the Kane title reign. Win one, lose the next. Win one, lose the next. You guys want to gloss over this in my opinion, another sacrifice for Shevchenko. Mm-hmm. Oh, just looking at that. I mean, I don't. Actually, really she's bro. She's so ripped. I don't. Hey, did she's you catch a good her at, uh, Smiley's? Brian, what was that? Did you catch What's her at Smiley's this past month? I wish. Bro, RJ didn't tell you. No. What are, you, what are you telling me? Then it's my fault. I apologize. I told Little Eddie Bravo to tell you that Valentina had been training at Smiley's the past few weeks due to the fact that the the humidity and everything, like the weather here is similar to Singapore. 
Mm-hmm. So she had been trailing at uh, Smiley's. Yeah, she been in town. Yep. Disgusting. My fault. I figured RJ would have told you. Devastated. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go. <laughs> I got to go. I'm done. I got to go. You they, disgust me. They knocked over my ice cream cone. <laughs> this is outrageous. He's like, you let my wife sneak into town and you didn't even tell me? <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> I, I'm I'm to blame too because I assumed he would have told you. Why would you assume that? Oh yeah, man, this this Santos it's RJ. Man. I don't I don't know I don't know, man. I don't. I really don't see a victory, bro. I just don't. Nah. The, the problem is it's against Shevchenko because Santos. I like her. She's a good fighter. She really is. It's just she going against the bullet, and the bullet is just. If you in the one twenty five division, you know what's up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just know. I I don't see a, it, a I don't see no way of victory. Honestly, like her last few fights has all been decisions, except for the last one. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I really don't see it. The submission was pretty surprising, though. Not even gonna lie. It was clean, but that's that's that girl's weakness to begin with. We don't mm-hmm. know that, but I just don't, I, man, I don't see it. I don't see. I don't see any path of victory. I could be wrong, and the underdog story happens, but I just don't see it. I, I, don't, I don't even see a live dog like with a. Uh, Pena against Nunez. I don't. I don't see. I don't see it. I really don't. I need to watch that Ultimate Fighter still. It's not I bad. just want to see their personalities colliding with each other, broken English and all. It hasn't really been too much. It's more of the the dudes in the house, it's like here and there. Kamaru's mm. or I don't know if it's his older brother or his younger brother. But he's a heavyweight. You're a big boy. Yeah, I, I mean, I figured at least Valentina, or not Valentina, I apologize. Um, Pena would be talking some shit. Been she's been trying to, like. Why, though? She's been trying to WWE this shit for a while now, so why is she changing in person? She did it already. Mm. She got her way. I don't see a path to victory for Talia Santos against Shevchenko. I mean, all the credit in the world if she does pull it off. Good to her. But she'll probably have to fight her in the run back for sure. That's the thing with the UFC. They don't have those rematch clauses like boxing and stuff. So it's just if you're like the champion forever and you lose to something you usually get a rematch unless you're Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo no unless you're Jose Aldo trying to get Conor McGregor yeah 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 that that thing that's it that thing cause I think Aldo in any other setup would have got a rematch Mm-hmm. uh I can't think of any other time there was an instant rematch, right? When somebody that was the reigning champion for a long time didn't get a rematch? Stipe versus Daniel Cormier. Not an immediate rematch. That's because somebody... <laughs> I won't call it favoritism, but you know what it is. Mm-hmm. What what What's uh, Tony Ferguson call it? Dana White privilege? Yeah, Dana White privilege. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Cormier ain't white, but hey, they know white privilege. That's all we got to say. Makes sense. Yeah. I think that's the only other one that I can think of. Well, yeah, moving forward to the main event. I ain't going to lie. I've been hyping this dude up for a little while, and I just now thought of something. Like, overlooking his... uh. 
UFC career. It's kind of mind-boggling how this man got a title shot so quick. There's a lot of factors in that, but... Yes, it is kind of mind-boggling. Like, yo, he came into the UFC, bopped Ozdemir. What? Like I said, he blocked a punch with his head against Ozdemir. Mm-hmm. And then bopped him and then did the uh, vicious elbow to Reyes. Two fights in the UFC, this man got a title shot. The only other person I could think of that got a quicker title shot might have been uh, Chandler, right? Yeah, one fight. Second fight was for the title. So, that's because their resume previously was so great. It's like applying for a job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but at the same time, Ozmir's a former title contender, right? Didn't he fight for the title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cormier yeah. taught him a lesson. Yeah, Ozmir's a for- former title contender, and he beat a former champion. Uh, a former champ, and both by like spectacular, spectacular, <laughs> spectacular, exciting knockout. So he had all the hype behind him. Who's in a champion? Dominic Reyes? What title he won? Oh my bad. Oh, he should have been champ. He should have been champ. The John he should have been champ. Should have right. Okay. I my get what bad. I think that he is former champion. That was a, a, a weird. My mind. But yeah, still, two former champs, people that were on huge hype trains at the time. So, therefore... Is it really the retirement division? In a retirement division. So, you beat the young young bucks in a retirement division. So, therefore, yeah, you get the championship title fight. Does anybody... Truly like Glover's chance in this one, or no? I do. I actually like it. I like it, man. I like it. The only reason why I say I like it is because he got, I think, Glover's kryptonite when he fights these young dudes is if they possess that instant power like Rumble. Didn't Rumble knock his tooth out? Oh yeah, he skyrocketed that motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. I think he's it's, he's got a chance. He's alive. He's a champion, but he's a live dog. Craziest thing, right? Yeah, Glover's tooth is orbiting with uh, Overeem's head. Yeah. And Randy and Randy Couture's tooth. <laughs> I think if this fight goes to the championship rounds, I'm leaning towards Glover. Unless he's just taking an absolute beating. And he's just got the heart of a lion in there, like, not giving up. That's that's the only way I see this fight going to decision is he just can't put away Glover because he's so tough. But I think it, Glover has a submission shot. I think this fight gets dirty. Because we don't know how good Yuri's cardio is. We don't know because what, the what, longest he's been in two rounds. Two rounds early in the second. Unless you're like a hype man for him and you know his whole discography or something, you know. I didn't. I watched a couple highlights here and there, but it's highlights. I don't know the whole fight history, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, that's what I give Clover. I give him the wrestling and. Uh, submission chances and I think he's smart with that but I also think that Yuri's going to be a fucking dog in those first two rounds he's going to have to weather a fucking storm to get past those first two rounds and then we'll see where the real fight's going to go in my head I feel the same way I think that that for that first Really, that first round, if Glover can get him, if Glover can get Yuri to the ground, then it's a huge advantage, I would say, 
the, the swing, the, the shift would swing that dramatically toward the champion. Um, but if he can't, and it's just a stand-up type deal, yeah, then I think it would favor heavily. Yuri, it would favor Yuri Prohashka heavily. So it's, I think it's whoever can get off whatever their edge is quick first, quickly, because I don't know. We, we haven't seen much of um, Yuri in deeper rounds, have we? I mean, he's only had two fights in the UFC, and I don't know his previous fights. Yeah. Before that, he fought CB Dalloway. Like, he had a couple fights in Ryzen. He's got some names, at least. Like, old school names. He has CB Dalloway, knocked out in the first round. Fabio Maldonado, knocked out in the first round. Uh, Mohamed Lal, knocked out in the third round. So he's been to the third. <laughs> but yeah, his his whole record has been... TKOs and knockouts whether in the first or second round. He somehow has a unanimous decision in two rounds. Don't know how that works. Okay. But he has one. Well and then yeah. And he has a draw, so he's been to the third round three times. I'll give him this. We'll say he, he probably could last all five rounds. Because that's the only knock we have on him, right? Mm-hmm. And what was his uh, takedown defense looking like out of these two fights? 100%? But I will fighter? say this. Yeah. His, his losses, he's been finished in all his losses. So he got knocked out twice and submitted once. Ratio is pretty solid, though. No, well, I mean, yeah, it's definitely he's a finisher. The thing with him, though, he does have one issue, one glaring problem, and he acknowledged it after his last fight against Reyes. He does take a lot of hits. Takes a lot of hits, and he's reckless. Yes, and against a veteran like. Glover, he might not want to do that. Glover could put you away both ways. He definitely can. And Glover in his last fight proved that he has a chin still. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker still can take some hits. So he good. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the odds in this one. Do I... Betting-wise, I'd probably lean more towards Yuri... But at the same time, every time I've counted Glover out, he just shows me that this old man ain't done yet. I'd stay away from betting on this one, honestly. Yeah, I would too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but mind-wise, I'm like, Yuri should be the winner, so that's probably the safer bet. But Glover... Glover's never counted out of any fight. You know what's the crazy thing about all this is we we got what we wanted with all the fights, the matchups we was like hoping for out of this two oh five division. With uh oh, yeah. Rakic and Blahovich and now Glover against Yuri. And this guy over here, he's making his little statement flying under the radar kind of is uh Ankaliev. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, whenever Magomed decides to show back up again, he might be fighting the loser of this fight, I believe. And the way it's looking, Jan's going to get a rematch for that title. Does he get a rematch, though? I, Absolutely. How many more fights is Glover going to do? Six. Do you think he's going to fight till he loses, or do you think he's going to... Because... Oh, I guess he did say two more fights and then right off to the sunset. Mm -hmm. Didn't he? Something like that. <laughs> Wait, what's John Jones's um title defense record? Like in a row. 
before he defeated himself. Many. <laughs> Many. <laughs> Many. Well, let's see. Let me see if I can do it off the top of my head. Okay, he won the title off of Shogun. Correct. Right? Then, yeah. I'm not sure who he defended against. I'm just going to name off names. And you tell me if that was all before he got stripped of the title. Okay? See, I can't remember, to be honest. You ready? Let's go. Yeah. Rampage. Machida. Before. Rashad. Before. Vitor. Before. DC. Chael. The first time before. Yeah, first DC fight. Yeah. So I'm already Chael's at definitely. six. I'm already at six. All right. Um, I'm not too sure how many more, but I'm pretty sure that's the most. And then after that, he was like, give and take. Gustafsson, seven. Uh, this is not in no order. I'm just naming who he fought before he lost his title because of his antics. So, right. that's seven. I'm pretty sure it could be one more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at the list of the... the th- oh, no, that was probably after. That's when he came back. Anthony Smith, Tiago Santos, Dominic Reyes, and who else? He, he fought... Uh, What's that guy's name? He had the uh, OSP. That was one. But that's all afterwards. I'm just looking at who did he fight. Before he lost his belt. That's what, seven dudes? That's some crazy stuff. He's probably got the best resume out of any fighter right now. Right now, yeah, probably. I still kind of want to lean towards um, GSP, but that's just biased. Wait, you mean like, is it, who's record resume are we stacking? We're talking about John Jones' resume is probably the best one. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So many there, former champions. Part of me that wants to lean towards GSP, but can't really argue some of the names on John Jones. And the same thing about his resume is it's like littered with former champions and other Hall of Fame types. Right. It's complete. Uh, let's see. I mean, think about it. Like, Bader's champ champ. He destroyed him. Oh, he, 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 <laughs> well, was, he champ. was champ champ. Was. Was. Who do you think goes the heavyweight first? Yuri or Rakic? If at all. I don't think either of them go. I think they stay in light heavyweight. They are the well, future of the division, I feel. Right? Yeah, I right. agree. Well, I do, even though I do believe that they both are the young guns in the division. Um, Rackage is going to be on the shelf for a little while with that knee injury. Mm-hmm. He, might, he might get chunky. Yeah, but I think he'll drop down. Okay. Or he'll lose the weight again, and I think he'll he'll be back at light heavyweight. I don't I don't really like a lot of the light heavyweights that have gone to heavyweight lately, but I think they also choose to go too late in their careers. Well, Gus and uh, Gus is coming back to two hundred five, right? No, he's going back to heavyweight. Okay, this boy is chunky win. right now. This boy can't win, bro. Let's go two hundred five, man. Come on, you got a shot. He should. He sh- I mean, I don't blame him for feeling the way that he did at the time because, you know, John Jones was still champ at the time, so he knew he wasn't going to get a title shot. Then he lost to Anthony Smith, who nobody respects, and this was before he actually started gaining respect. So I would say Anthony Smith is probably <clears throat> the most underrated fighter on the roster. I said nobody respects him. I didn't say he wasn't a decent fighter. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that I, <laughs> yeah. think, I think he might be the most overlooked fighter on the whole roster. Like, as far as his talent and credentials, like, he's a legit title contender. 
but nobody gives him any respect. Yeah, it's it's kind of shitty because like if you just look at his record without like deep diving into it, he has a really shitty record. On paper, he looks terrible, but he, got a he lot is fights. a great fighter. He got a lot of fights. Yeah, a lot, a lot of fights. He's got a good KD. You know what I'm saying? He got a good KD. Good ratio. Yeah. His KDR is good. Yeah. People um, just don't respect him. Forever underdog, Lionheart. Well, that's the thing. Like, he's basically Nick Diaz, but with better record. Like, he has a lot of losses, and he's never in a boring fight. Like, you can't. I, I, don't, I can't remember a, a Anthony Smith fight that I was like, "Can we get to the next one, please?" It's always. He's always in a even in a, even in his losing efforts. It's, it's exciting, but for whatever reason, maybe it's because he's he doesn't talk enough shit, or he just doesn't really like look the part of um, a superstar. Like I guess, but for whatever reason, he doesn't get any of the buzz that other guys in his, with, with his in his situation get. There's like there's plenty of. Up and comers who, um, well, not up and comers, but guys who have that same, like, you know, a couple wins and they're in the title shot, and everybody's talking about them. Like, they get a lot, they get a lot of national media attention and they get a lot of, um, online fan support. And not saying that Anthony doesn't get any, but based off of, like, how good he is. I just feel it should be more. The only other guy I can say that would be in the same wheelhouse as him would be uh, Banal Dariush, but I think it's mainly because of his injury history. Well, yeah, he kind of disappears for long periods at a time. Yeah. Anthony Smith does have his opportunity to get back into the title picture with his next oh, fight. Oh, yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Against uh, Ankalaev. And I said earlier, whenever he decides to show back up, and he's showing back up against Anthony Smith. That's gonna be a good one. My goodness. And Goliath is a monster. Mm-hmm. I think he's I think he's even better than um Rackage. I think Rackage is really good though. I I would I like um and Goliath shot against um well whoever in that if in if he, even if he goes against Yuri, I think he'll be fine. I gotta see what Yuri could do, man. If he puts away Glover like easily, I still don't. You know what I mean? I just, I just gotta see something, man. Who's Blo- Who's Blahovic got? He's uh in the Blahovic just won. He beat Rakic. Well, that was oh, a really injured. good matchup. It was a good fight. Uh-huh. He was. Uh, uh, Jan Blahovic was tearing up them winning. legs. He was tearing up right. them legs. But we don't. But he's, know he's having things scheduled, happened. right? No, no, no. no. I think he's he's probably slated to fight the winner of this fight coming up. Everything I feel is going to play out well for the 205 division because we got this fight coming up and probably by the end of the year or so we'll have a title defense from the winner of this weekend against Jan and then possibly... After that, with the Ankalaev and Anthony Smith fight, we'll probably see them fight hopefully soon because that's a really long time to be waiting for a fight if they got to wait till the end of the year. Unless Anthony Smith fights, he, he wouldn't have to. He, well, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? If Glover wins, does he fight Jan immediately or does... Jan have to fight the winner of Ankalaev and Anthony Smith before he gets the title shot. Jan immediately. And if you think Yuri wins, what happens with that victory? Does Jan fight immediately? Um, according to news, it's supposed to be the winner of the Anthony Smith fight. Really? Because Jan's complaining right now that he he says he deserves it more than 
the winner of Anthony Smith versus um what was the other guy's name? Inkaliev. Yeah, Inkaliev. Well, see that sucks, man. I, the leg injury to Rakic. You know what I mean? Because if it was a normal loss, there'd be another dancing partner for these guys. But since it's an actual injury loss, a bad injury at that is, we don't know how long his return is going to take. So it kind of sucks when you got things like that. These injuries, man. You remember that one year when we had like injury after injury for every pay-per-view just about? Yeah. Terrible. These injuries, man. It was rough. I think I think it's just a play that they want. I think they want Uncle Iv to win that fight, and they want new blood. I think the UFC wants new blood at top. I think that's all it is. And as much as Jan has Polish power and had his, like, 15 minutes of fame or whatever, he getting on the way out, too. Yo, his only title defense is against a middleweight. Right. He's on his way out. One of his best knockouts is against a middleweight. Just saying. Although I love that knockout. That's one of my personal favorites. It was but clean. It was clean. That's that's for many reasons. He won Some the title spectacularly, though, against a 205-er, though. I give him that one. Yes. That was Dude. that was beautiful. That was domination. I really enjoyed that press conference when he said uh, he's Vegeta and I'm Broly. I was like, oh, my man watches that? What? Okay. <laughs> So like, I see what you're doing here. I don't know. The 205 division, man, I really feel I'm going to go down to, like, the bottom half of it. I really like that Jamal Hill. That's what I like. I like that for the newcomer, in my opinion. And Ryan Spann. I think he's got a lot of potential, too. He's a little inconsistent, but, yeah, he has potential. Yep. I'm all gonna be dangerous. Jamil, I'm all about Paul Craig right now. I'm gonna say he'll can, he'll can be dangerous if he, if he can um, shore up his grappling defense. I mean, I still there's a lot of people in this division on the lower end that I have a lot of faith in in the future. Like, like Johnny Walker could always make a comeback if he figures out his training. In my opinion, uh, Jimmy Crute is still a guy that can come back. And have a good run. Uh, Jamal Hill, of course. Paul Craig can make a run at this. Dominic Reyes. I don't think he's done yet. I think he can still be a contender in this division. So, there's there's people to be excited for. Rackage, when he, whenever he gets his uh, knee healed up, he's definitely going to be a contender. But right now, we just have a couple of the uh, veterans that are just... Holding strong. Jimmy Crute's another one that's um, healing up from a knee injury, so. Yeah. And look how long he's been out. Well, that's why I was saying when they come back, they can make runs, but. It's been a while. It's been a long time, Jimmy Crute. What about this? Uh, we didn't mention these other two fights, these two welterweight fights on, um, on this weekend's card. Um, some good ones, man. Uh, Jake Matthews and Andre Fial, Fijal. All to wait about. Should be a good one. I don't really think there's any like title contention on the line there or even spikes in the rankings, but that is a scrap. And it's that a good should one. be a good, good technical fight. And then. So. On top, um, and right before that, there's um, Jack Dilla Madalena and Rosman Emiv. Emiv, what a name. That should be a good one, too. I expect this whole card to be pretty good because the prelims look good, too, man. 
Yo, your the boys aren't bad either. Oh, your boys on there, cuz. Pretty Yo, uh, the Portuguese so dude. Yo, he's been on a tear. Yeah. The Portuguese dude. <laughs> he had knocked out uh, Baeza. Then he fought after that, and I think he either submitted the dude or knocked him out. Yeah, this Portuguese dude of. Uh, I don't know how to say F F I think it's Fijao. <laughs> you know, we butcher names on here. Without yes, yes, we do. Out. Andre, we'll just call him Dre. Yeah, Dre. He he he's been on the tear. He has been on the tear. He's. I think he's boy. like April, May, June. Every month he's fighting. The leader of the Korean, the leader of the Korean blood division, is um. He's he's fighting in the main event. By the way, main event. Who? Su Woo Choi. Who? Su Woo. <laughs> oh, that's I've one, seen him uh, fight like once or twice. Sun Kin's cousin. Yeah. Oh. Oh shit. Now, yo, this one lightweight um, on the the prelim uh, co-main is uh he has one name on the UFC website. Website. Oh, you on there? Yeah. Oh, you talking about uh, me? Hey, shape. <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> Mah Mahashite. Oh, God. Uh, Mahashete? I think it's Mahashot. Mahashot? Ma ma it's Machete. Ma, he shot. No, it's Machete. Ma, he shot. It's Machete. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. It's Machete. Machete. <laughs> hey, man, go grab Machete. Man. Jesus. But oh, he's Chinese. They got no respect for either of these guys, though. Because oh, this guy got one name. And then his opponent over there has got a picture with, like, the the biggest farmer's tan ever. Like, what the fuck's going on over here? Bro, he did it to himself. <laughs> Steve Garcia. Hey, you like tank tops, bro? He did it to himself, bro. <laughs> he did it to himself, bro. There's no way. Oh, yeah, he was wearing a tank top. He probably, he probably was, like, he was probably at the beach or something, you know what I mean? Just chilling. He ain't going Working out, out of the beach. water or nothing. No, he probably ain't going to water or nothing, so he was just chilling. You know what I'm saying? He was outside chilling. Right. You can't blame him. <laughs> can't blame him. But Brendan Allen's another good fighter on there for a middleweight bout. Uh, I like I like his future, even though he's a... Oh, no, he's he's the dog. He's not the underdog in that one, so you good. But, yeah. This prelim should be good. Damn, getting a lot of getting a lot of Asian talent on this one. I know they're in Singapore, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we seem to get like all the um it's like all the Asian all stars from all like everyone is like either the Chinese, we got a lot of like um Koreans on this one about on this one. Well not yeah. a lot, but with some. So Yeah, some kids are fighting on there too. Oh um, Liu Kang's uncle's on here too. <laughs> Liu Kang. No, that's Sun Kim's uncle. King Ho Kang. Oh, is he Korean? Yeah, yeah, that's his uncle. Mr. My bad, Perfect. ho. That's uh, Mr. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, Sun Kim's uncle's fighting. Uh, the I think that, that H.O. Oh. Over there um, in the UFC that came back to Jacksonville. Remember this dude? Yeah, uh, the bot, bot, yeah, bot Grill. Storm. Dana. Storm. I think he won when mm -hmm. he was in Jacksonville. I think, I think he, he did, too. I think that H O is pronounced Hue. Oh my bad! I straight up said Ho. Because only reason I know that is because the the kicker for Atlanta is is Young Ho Ko Kue, but they pronounce it Young Wei Kue. The H O is like a Hue. I don't know how, but yeah, it is what it is. All I have to say is F T F. And I won't tell nobody what that means. Only Brian knows. I will. Man, fuck the Falcons. That's what that means. <laughs> Why? Do Do you think that they're competition this year? It's personal. Is that, is that what you're worried about? <laughs> Embrace competition. All right. Side note: When talking about football, the Saints' only rivals are the Falcons. Any other team doesn't matter. So, yep. I guess so. Eli. Mm. There's only two fights on the prelims, and it's both um, 
got two a strawweight and a featherweight women's bout. Some girl fights. <clears throat> On the early prelims? I early think there prelims. were more, but uh we lost a fight because somebody went to one of the prelims guys went to um the hospital or something. Uh, you know why? I can find out why. I just glanced at the article headline not too long ago. I feel like I've seen this uh, Silvana Gomez Juarez fight before. Dang, I said her. You name think it's properly. a rematch? No, no, I've seen her fight before. She she looks familiar, but uh, Liang Na, I, I don't think I've ever seen her fight before. Liang Na. Yeah, I don't think I've seen her fight before. See if I find it. I guarantee you, this fight's either gonna be a crazy. Slugfest or um, a point fight? Should Those be, be the only two options. Nah, it could be a solid jujitsu matchup, but somebody doesn't That's really fair. grapple. That's fair. The Pantera. He got hospitalized for kidney issues. Uh, to cut weight. Rodrigo Bonotron. Couldn't cut weight properly or something. Yo, she was uh, America? I thought she was uh, definitely from uh, overseas. And I thought she was from America. Man, it's tricking me, bro. Is this a, a featherweight fight in the uh, women's division? Oh, it is. It is. Oh, wow. Wow. Check this out. The winner of this fight could possibly get a title shot. And they're both coming off a loss. I mean, a winner of that fight's definitely number one contender in the division of three. Mm-hmm. Ramona Pasquale against Jocelyn Edwards. Yes, yeah, it definitely. The winner of that could potentially be getting a title shot against Amanda Nunes if she decides to defend that title. Because she's fighting, what, July 30th against uh, Pena, right? The rematch? Mm-hmm. So the winner of this could possibly see a title fight October, November at Featherweight. We did see her fight. I remember that fight. I saw her lot lose. These two ladies have a chance at gaining a title if they win. Mm. And so it's random. Fight. It's the first fight of the card. Maybe they gotta they gotta keep <laughs> it banging. They gotta do something. I hope their coaches tell them. You gotta set it off right. Mm-hmm. Set it off. I suggest y'all. Oh, uh, she's. Edwards is uh, on the chopping block right now too. She's she's on two fight losing streak. It is what it is. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, she I always do this, man. She's fighting at one forty five, but her last fight was against uh, Jessica Rose Clark. Isn't Rose Clark fighting at one twenty five? Is she still in the UFC? Jessica Rose Clark? Yeah. Is she still in the UFC, I think. Man, I'm going to miss another great card. Mm-hmm. <sighs> My schedule's terrible. That's all I got to say. Maybe I could work something out and catch this one. You just got uh, You just got to get used to it. No, 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 no. It's because instead of being off... I got work, and then instead of being off again, I got work. I, well, like I said, you just gotta get used to it. Don't get me wrong, I do want to. I have to deal with that shit all the time. I really, 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 really want to watch this fight night card. The one after this one coming up, the Calvin Cater against mm-hmm. Josh Emmett fight. I really want to watch that one. I want to watch Cowboy against Joe Lozon. I really want to watch Tim Means against Kevin Holland. Like, I want to watch Joaquin Buckley, who me and Brian saw, and 
I thought that dude was huge. He not that like he a normal dude. Like a normal dude. He be adds a lot of pounds. He adds a lot of pounds? The TV does. Oh, bro. Yeah, you you know we saw him. We saw him standing in line to go pee. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He looked like a normal dude, hat backward, t shirt, chilling. You know what I'm saying? They were fighting at 135. And every time I see like somebody that's remotely famous, I just I'm like, was that? That was him. Damn. Every time. Every time. Then I seen him twice. That's the messed up part about it. Oh, that. Yep, that's him. Okay. That's <laughs> every him. time. Every time. So yeah, I'm, I want to see that fight too. Like. Oh, and you got Cuban Missile Crisis fighting next weekend or next next weekend. Yeah, man. Next next weekend. Not this weekend, next weekend. I don't even know what day it is no more. What's the day? Wednesday? Friday. Today is Friday, bro. Okay, makes sense. It makes sense. I've been up since Monday. That's how I feel. Smoke Monday. I've been drunk since Sunday. (laughs) You're in the same boat as me. Well, I haven't been drinking since Monday but, or Sunday, but yeah. So I was on vacation all week. Uh, the bottles have been going. I just saw a pretty cool tweet. Um, Movar Ivovalev, he said he, he got he, he kind of like took a shot at Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen was like. 190 a liter, and that's in um, I guess he's he's a UK because um, I think it's the pound symbol. He's like lovely, so that's I think that's basically like the equivalent of uh, like nine dollars a gallon in the US if you convert it over to US. And uh, over oh, um, Volvolev, I'm, I'm crushing that fucking name. Sensational. As we do. Mm-hmm. He was like, shouldn't be an issue with your gas tank. <laughs> Damn, homie. That's hilarious. All right, so have you guys seen any, anything in the, like, the news lately that just caught your eye? I know, I know we saw that uh, Mike Perry against MVP matchup in bare knuckle boxing. We was talking about yeah, and I was confused because I thought that Bellator cut him or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we got on air, we was discussing that. I think Mike Perry stands a good shot at this fight. Honestly. So do I. Honestly. Like I, I'm a fan of MVP, but... Me too. I don't know. There's just... He ain't got there's something natural about nothing. him in there. It's straight hands. So, he's got a shot at this. And we know Mike Perry's tough. Yes. But we know... I mean, the only thing that I give MVP the advantage on in this situation, since it's boxing, is he has length. He has length. He's got the reach. He's got good movement. But Mike Perry's also going to walk right through that and get cut the fuck up and not care. Exactly. That man's going to be a cyborg, Terminator-type dude. Well, MVP eliminates cyborgs. He's going to be a Terminator. Let me, let me rephrase that or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, He's the last cyborg that he fought, he disrespected in many ways. Oh, yeah, bro. He made him a meme. If you had to guess where in the world has the highest gas prices, what would you guess? I'd usually guess California, but I'm pretty sure it's the UK. Oh, you want to take a swing? Ukraine. By by default, Mosey's closer because you said you said California. No, I didn't say California. Mark, well, I yeah. said I would usually say California, but uh, Europe or when I said Europe, I meant Great Britain. Okay, here's the top five. At at eleven dollars a gallon, Hong Kong, China. At 
all at nine dollars and sixty cent, Norway. Nine dollars and thirty cents, Denmark. Nine dollars flat, Central African Republic, at nine dollars, well, eight ninety three, Monaco. Then Finland, Iceland, Greece, and Netherlands. Netherlands is the cheapest at eight dollars and fifty cents. It's weird. They're all socialist com- or countries. And now you know. And we we got a socialist president. Guess what our prices are? Be I mean, they're skyrocketing. Um, I think the last time I paid for gas, it was five fifty, almost five forty something. Hey, we don't talk about that here. Let's let that go. Oh, I'm just saying. Uh, I'm not even saying reasonings why. I'm just saying that the gas prices are hurting me. My my little four-cylinder costing me $80 a a fucking tank is a lot when you have to do that every week. I totally understand. It hurts, too. The last thing I'm going to say on that in honor of Pride Month, in honor of Pride Month, I think LGBTQ should stand for Let's Get Biden to Quit. I want them to, like, riot against gas. Let's go. But they probably don't care. So, I mean, we wouldn't be in any better situation if Biden quit anyways. Because, I mean, next in line is Camilla. So, I'm she's going to do the same shit. <laughs> All right, Just let's get back on fight talk, guys. Let's get back on fight talk. Well, there was a boxing death. Yep. Um, yeah. We brought it to my yeah, young, attention. Young, I mean, what's up? You guys brought it to my attention earlier. I did not know about that. Yeah, young guy too, 24 years old. South Africa, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, and he was definitely winning. Like the clip I seen, he knocked the guy through the ropes, and the next thing you know, he saw the ref. And he was like a bull charging that red, I don't know what it's called, you know, the matador. He was going for the ref, and yeah, ropes. Then he saw he saw a ghost, like for real. Did they ever say what 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 happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Usually, when it's something like that, it's like a head injury, like a brain injury. It came to a brain aneurysm. Yeah, is what happened. My boy was shadow boxing in the shadow realm. Rest in peace to the homie. I saw him. Um, And I mean. That makes sense, too, because brain aneurysms, when you start bleeding out in your brain and you get that pressure in your brain, you tend to, like, hallucinate. So he he was fighting something. We just couldn't see it. It, it looked like that. You ever see Menace Society? No, wait, no, Boys in the Hood. The scene where he was, like, punching the air? Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. A little bit. And he's like, I'm tired of this shit. And start swinging. And if any one of those shots would have landed, it could have been a fight ending strike. So I want to give a lot of shout out and pour someone out. We'll take a moment of silence for the homie. While Moses takes a piss. Yeah. Boxing is brutal, man. I think we get... That's probably the most overlooked fight sport by the casual fan. They see it as like these big pillows on your hands and it's not as graphic looking as MMA can be. And while I do agree that MMA is much more complicated with all the added variables, boxing to me is by far more brutal. Not, I think it's by far more brutal. I I would say the biggest difference between MMA and boxing when it comes to brutality wise and the reason why it's overlooked so badly is let's be honest if you knock somebody out in MMA fight's over it's done boxing a lot of the things that would be TKO stoppages in MMA boxing lets you sit there and try to recover for 10 seconds and let you get back up and they'll let you do that three times before they call it a, a call it a done deal. So you're taking a lot of what in MMA we talk about 
excess damage, unnecessary damage and everything, and that's built into the rules in boxing. Right. You know? if, if, we, if we go on by damage done per minute in a fight or in a competition, because they're, both, they're sports, um, I think boxing takes the cake. I think they take way more damage per minute. Um, and while mixed martial arts is more brutal, you can mm-hmm. um, elbow legally, knee, knee legally, shout out to Peter Yan. Um, you can hit guys with shots like head kicks and wheel kicks that can take, I mean, you know, knock years off of your life. But it's one shot and you don't have to get any follow up. Um, whereas boxing, you're getting concussive blow after concussive blow, round after round. And um, it's amazing to see the guys who don't get fucked up. In boxing, like guys like um, Tyson Fury and guys like Floyd Mayweather, who rarely get hit or hurt, even though Fury's been down a few times, he's a heavyweight, so that that's part of that, that happens. I mean, anytime you get into the ring with um, Deontay Wilder for three bouts, you're gonna get knocked down. Um, I don't care who you are if you're not knocked out. So Tyson Fury, Floyd Mayweather. But not many other people. Well, I guess uh, the recently retired. Um, well, I mean, I guess I'm thinking like there are some other prospects that have that um, that don't get hit much, like Devin Haney, um, Shakur Stevenson, stuff like that. But it's it's I think it's a brutal sport. And by if da- damage done per minute, I think boxing takes the cake. I think it's the most brutal uh, combat sport we have. I don't know if I would hit that more or if I would hit kickboxing more with that, but yeah, probably boxing. Well, you know what, what, what I, gets I, reported more? What what has the more reported deaths? Boxing for sure. Boxing, one hundred percent. But that's also because it's the oldest sport. How many? Well, yeah. Uh, if you go like a sample size of the last ten years of deaths in MMA, kickboxing. And boxing and yeah, all that. Boxing still. Boxing, Bo- boxing still. still for, boxing. For, it's boxing still for two reasons. Um, boxing's wildly more popular worldwide. That is true. There's mm-hmm. more. There's more boxers worldwide than there are anything else, and it's just the most. It's more brutal. Like, like, like we saw, like Mark said earlier, you were um, taking a piss mode, but Mark was. Um, he hit it spot on. You get clipped in a. A mixed martial arts contest, you might get a few follow up shots, but as we saw with Rosenstrike and um, Volkov last weekend, the fight's waved off once you're compromised. It's done with a good referee. The fight's done, but in boxing with a great referee, they're gonna give you time to recover and then get your ass kicked again. And if you survive that round, it's gonna happen again the next round. And if you survive that one, guess what? You'll get another happen again, <laughs> right? And you go you go in twelve rounds. So you get more, you get um like I said per minute a boxer is going through much more hell than a, a a mixed martial artist is. Although I do believe mixed martial arts is a beautiful sport and it's it has its its own brutality, but the, the rules definitely make boxing a lot more brutal in my opinion. Yes, that's exactly how I see it. You know what I want, You know what I have a big mystery about. I have a, a, a big. I'm not really. It's not really a conspiracy theory, but I have a. It makes me scratch my head when I think about it. And when we watch a, a UFC fight, we watch a Bellator contest, we watch a, a one championship fight, or we watch a fight in PFL. The biggest complaint I ever hear from casuals at the bar is how much they don't like grappling. How much they don't like the tactics of like um, laying and praying or grinding a guy out with wrestling up against the cage to try to get a win because it's not exciting. Wait a minute. But I'm all against lay and pray. No, I'm just. Oh wait, but I have a, a point I want to land on. It's not because it's not about lay and pray. But in return, on the flip side of that, why isn't then kickboxing not more popular in the U.S. 
why isn't Muay Thai not more popular in the U.S.? If if you only want to see guys stand and throw strikes, why isn't kickboxing and Muay Thai more popular in the U.S. as opposed to a fight that like like MMA where that's the only window for grapplers. They don't have another place to showcase their skill set. So if you don't like grappling, and MMA is just not for you. But yeah, if you only want to see stand up chaos, which is heavily provided in K1 and heavily provided in kickboxing all around the world, also Muay Thai, why isn't that then more popular in the U.S. when it's an older sport? That's a good question. That is. I've never understood question. that. I mean, I can kind of actually legitimately answer that, but at the same time, I've never understood that. It should be more popular for that exact reason, because Muay Thai especially, brutal, brutal sport. They are literally fucking each other up, and it's... A beautiful sport to watch but I would say the reason why it's not more popular in America or even worldwide as popular as it should be is it just doesn't have the promotions to back it you know they they put on all these like like Muay Thai is known for like underground backdoor type you know underground club type fights more than it is anything else Kickboxing to America was never a real sport because they were kicking and they, they'd rather watch boxing. So it doesn't get the publicity here as it does across seas. And they, like I said, the, one of the things that the UFC does better than anyone else is promote their fights and promote their brand. They dump a shit ton of money into that. A lot of those other sports just don't have that kind of backing, even though they should. I have a great answer to that. You guys remember when the UFC had like barely any rules? Mm -hmm. You could wear shoes and all kinds of other stuff. I think when they decided to go become a real sport, per se, a combat Mm -hmm. sport, some of those rules were lost to cater towards wrestling and grappling more than say the out of the United States competitions like Pride. Pride had some brutal rules. Imagine if we had those rules implemented also on top of with the UFC rules, but minus what do you guys think? The soccer kicks was too much? Or I don't, should be I there. Don't, it should be there. Yeah, I don't mind soccer kicks. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like 1FC. Soccer kicks are back. Uh, yellow cards are back. Um, red cards are back for you, uh, 1FC. So, and I'm all for to, them. And uh, grounded opponents. And knees to grounded opponents, yeah. The only thought I didn't like with Pride was the elbows. No elbows on the ground. That made no sense to me. Like, yo. When I you're allowed to soccer dude, kick somebody. I could knee this dude in the head on the ground. I can't elbow him. What's the difference? I'm getting more you torque can, off my knee. Like you could full fledged soccer kick them to the face, but yet you weren't allowed to elbow them. Exactly. That's <laughs> why I think some of the like the rules for the UFC strongly cater towards grappling, not just wrestlers, but grappling in general. Like if you could elbow somebody trying to take you down. Like, if you can elbow them to the back of the head while they're trying to take you down, that's going to change the fight drastically. Am I right? But you can't do that. Or in the back. Or in their, in their back. In their spine and shit. Are they not allowed to do that either? Actually, I've no. never seen that. I've never seen that. No, it's not. Like, no, no, one, no, one, no one goes for it. It's illegal. What? What happened? So I tried to get distracted by work. Getting elbowed in the spine uh, in a, doing a takedown attempt. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's... I don't know if that's illegal or not, to be honest, but I'm pretty sure it's, like, heavily frowned upon. No, it's definitely illegal. Um, okay. Yeah, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to allow soccer kicks, you can't allow ground and pound. If you're outlawing yeah. ground strikes, then you why would you allow ground and pound, but you won't allow soccer kicks? Is um, I don't... 
That doesn't make sense. To me. They, they allow knees to the body, but not knees to the head. Who? In the UFC. On grounded opponent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's all fair. Knees to the body. I was like, oh, no, you can knee whatever in 1FC. I like the rules. Set the groin. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. We don't, don't need know. a replay. That's why I think, like I said, if you look at every other promotion, wrestlers, how, how well have wrestlers done in other promotions besides the UFC? I'll wait. I don't think. But, I mean, you got Fedor. He was a Sambo guy. Wait, uh, how many Pride Pride champions were wrestlers? No, no, no. I'm saying, like, how many wrestlers did well outside of the UFC? Like, say you took somebody that was a great yeah, wrestler. Um, Dan, Dan, Dan Henderson did well outside of the UFC. Man, um, he was knocking everybody out, though. Wrestling. I'm talking about a wrestler, I, wrestler. I okay. think a lot of that has to do with... Um, Ring versus cage, though, too. No, no, dude. Um, Mark Coleman. Um, That's old. School. Kevin Randleman. Mark Coleman even struggled going into Randleman. the ring, though. Yeah, he was a wrestler, but bro, he was knocking people out or slamming them on the head. But yeah, he he wrestled a good bit. He wasn't I mean, wrestling I was, like. I was... Like he wasn't wrestling. No, he wasn't down, John Fitch. Punch, yeah, punch yeah, like that. Yeah. I think that's only because of UFC, the cage. Actually, like you said, the cage kind of... Um... The cage, yeah. That is true. Maybe maybe it shouldn't be the UFC and pride rules. Maybe it should be more like ring versus cage rules. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because like, the, the ring, just for wrestlers, especially in a boxing ring, there, there's not a lot of room to work. Like... Especially back in the day when you were trying to go for a power double, you needed some distance. And you were basically getting slammed and then stood up and then put back in the middle. <laughs> like, eh, I don't know. I've never really liked... That was one of the biggest things I didn't like about Pride is that it was in a ring. Because I felt like there was a lot of holdups because of the ropes and stuff. You didn't like Pride because of that? Yeah, I didn't like the ring. That's the only reason what, negative I can say I didn't like Pride. Other than that, I loved Pride. I liked Pride a lot. There was so much to love about Pride. It's just I I was never a fan of MMA in a boxing ring. I, I, I just felt like Pride, it was like back then, it was more along the lines of these, you got all these guys on the come up, you know, and they were so good. And, you know, you had the UFC, like, pushing its way through to be number one. And then you, you saw these other guys across the Pacific doing their thing. Right. And you had stars over there. We did, Anderson Silva used to come out to Michael Jackson. You had Crow I, Cop. You, you had so many great UFC veterans now that came from Pride. And it's nuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I mean, I do miss... Pride is. I do miss having legit competition for the UFC. They do have it, but they don't have it. It's like... I mean, Bellator doesn't stand up to what Strike Force used to be. Bellator doesn't stand up to what Pride used to be when it comes to competition. Yes, the UFC is bigger now than it was back then but you used to have strike force going on pride going on wec going on and it was like a legit which one was better you know in my personal opinion maybe it's biased because it's what i watched the most of wec was the shit for me that oh, was yeah, like yeah, yeah. They that was number them. one for me they bought them they're like hold up right we got to get you and you're here that's like why they, they made were that light the weight division solid. Right. They were the most entertaining fights in my opinion. But they didn't get enough credit because they were the lighter weights. Not oh, bullshit. You had Aldo. 
You had Ben Henderson, Anthony Pettis. You had so many great fighters over there. Donald Cerrone. Uh, Cowboy. Like, I could go on and on with it uh, about the right. lightweight division. But featherweight-wise, they brought over Jose, and that's exactly what you got to say. You California kid brought over Dominic. Mm-hmm. They brought so many other dudes from that division. The and they also division. brought over some bigger guys that, you know, aren't really known for WEC, even though they did. Like, that's where Chael Sonnen came from. That's where Mark Munoz came from. Carlos Condit. Uh, Carlos Condit came from WEC. There's a lot of guys that – oh, what's his name? Stan. Brian Stan? Brian Stan. Brian Stan. Like, the that's, original that's, All-American. That's old school stuff, though. Come and think yeah. of it now. If like, that's over ten years ago. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, like, if Those we're talking pride great. area and everything, we had legitimate competition for the UFC. And I even remember that um, WEC was putting on more shows than the UFC at around that time. You know, it's crazy. They only had like one or two pay per views the mm-hmm. whole time. You right. Really have to catch that on what, like, Spike TV or something like that. <laughs> Back when that existed. Exactly. <laughs> it was, yeah, Spike TV and then later on Axis TV. That's what they changed it to? That's not what they, I don't know if that's what they changed it to or not, but that's when I started watching fights on other things. You could watch a lot of the reruns of the, uh, of Pride on there too. And Pride was so good. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Pride, they got when UFC acquired them, they got so many good fighters out of that. Yeah, they got some legends out of that. They got Anderson, Vanderlei, Shogun, the Nogueras, Crow Cop, Dan Henderson. I mean, the list goes on and on. Really, Rampage, they got so many good fighters out of just acquiring that. That fits so well with the UFC. That was a good yeah. move for them. But right now, all three of those were great moves for them. But right now, it's like, man, just why can't we just have one whole unified MMA circuit? You know what I mean? Why keep it separate? Yeah, I understand that UFC's. It's a business. It's all a business. It's all a business. But why can't we just have, like, leagues and just put them all together at one time of the year? Your champion versus my champion. Have a little tournament or something. Do something. In all honesty, maybe we could try to get away with that nowadays. But if it was open the way that people wanted to be open back in the day, it would have never been it would have never worked out. We would have never had MMA wouldn't be a sport anymore, guaranteed. Because you have to give the UFC credit for building the sport to what it is. Without right. the UFC dumping the money that they did into it, they paved the way. They had to pave the way, and you also got to understand that in order to do that, that's one of the reasons why everyone's underpaid. This isn't a contract. This isn't, as like Dana White would say, a going out of a business sale for every fight pay-per-view or anything. They got to expand to new markets. They got to build the sport. They got to keep doing these things to expand. And that takes a shit ton of money from them. Not that they're not profiting a shit ton of money, but Bellator can't do the same thing that they can do because they can't dump that kind of money into it, period. Well, the UFC is a relatively young company in general. Right. They're not even, what, they're like 30 years old, maybe? Nah, not even. 20. Exactly. Less. What the dog said. They started. The dog said no. They're like 21, 22? Nah, I think we had the 25th, uh, 25th anniversary not too long ago. Maybe. Was it 25? Because, well, we started in... 20 or 25. One of the two. But either way, they're a young company compared to... Well, MMA in general. Yeah. Spotlight 
is a young company or young sport compared to boxing or any other sport. MMA hasn't been around long enough. It came around, what, like the 90s? 93, 94? So give or take, we're, we're not that old in yeah. sport-wise compared to other sports that's been around for like 100 years, like boxing. How long boxing's boxing? been over 100 years. Exactly. They've been boxing since the old days. Right. So you just got to look at it that way. That's why boxing probably makes so much money in general. But it's not like every boxer makes that kind of money. It's the stars. You right. Be a star boxer to be making that money. But, but even then, even probably like the stars, they're not disclosing that kind of money. They're not like. There's only a few good boxers that's making that kind of money that people think they're making. Yeah. People see people like Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder and be like, oh, they're making $100 million a fight. I don't think so. Most boxers don't do that. I don't think they're uh, making $100 million either. Like, straight up. I don't think they're making that much. They might be making I think on there. average they make somewhere around $20 million a fight. Exactly. Like, like so $20 million Mayweather, He's different. Mayweather's different. He He's that guy he's gonna make that money he's a right. different case but on average and i've made this argument a thousand times where yes the the big stars in boxing make ridiculous amounts of money compared to what a mma fighter is ever gonna make exactly or anytime soon at least but on average the lower end fighters in the ufc at least Still make a good amount more than the average boxer. Yeah, because there's so many boxers. Right. Like your I mean, average boxer that might be like a professional fighter at like two and zero or something, might not see as much money as somebody that's two and zero in the UFC. That's the other thing that you got to look at in boxing too, though. Like your your record in boxing doesn't mean shit. Until you got like 20 fights under you. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you got people in MMA who are making six figures with seven, with ten fights. That, you know, if they became a star early on enough, the popularity, popularity wise. Man. You know? So it's like, it's a give and take. You also got boxers that are making a couple hundred bucks a fight. You know what's crazy, though? Like, these past few weeks, the Jake Paul feed has been kind of quiet. He just announced, so that's about to start. He just announced? Come back. What did he announce? He announced that he will fight in August at M- MSG. Uh, and who's uh, his opponent? girl, Amanda Serrano, is going to be hold up. A co-headliner. I said ho-liner. <laughs> co-headline. Who's uh he fighting? No they have not announced who they're fighting. Either one of them? Either one of them. They just said they're going to be there. That's all that matters. Okay. So they have a main event and a co-main event without anybody to fight. No, that's interesting. August 6th. That's Man, that's right around the corner. That's really interesting. They don't even have an less than two an months of promotion. Okay, well, dude, you can promote on the internet nowadays so fast on something. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You give you give the world like two weeks notice. You're good to go. You know, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Internet. Yeah, but I mean, do you? The, the crazy thing about this, and to me it says something about the actual fights that both of them are taking. To me it says something about the quality of your opponent when all you have to do is announce that you're fighting and no one gives a shit about your opponent. Like, normally that wouldn't even be an announcement. You wouldn't have posters drawn up like he does already for it. All you have is a location and two fighters, which is yourself and the one that you have under contract with you, and not even an opponent. They're just like, hey, we got this day. Yeah. 
Like, are you going to give your opponents a training camp? Are you going to wait till like two weeks before and be like, hey, I want to fight you <laughs> and see if they take it? Like, what if it's a uh, Tyron Woodley three? <laughs> I Ben Askren I two. don't know. I hope he actually tries to fight somebody legit this time. In my like, opinion, if he would have fought Tommy Fury instead of someone is at oh the my front god, door. hello, somebody's at hey, you my got door. someone at your front door. Hello, somebody's at my door. But either way, I think if he would have fought like Tommy Fury the first go around instead of Tyron the second time, he might have got some respect. But with Jake Paul, it's more of a, along the lines of like, yeah, he's cool doing his thing. He brought more eyes to boxing in a way. Right. But he's not fighting nobody notable. He's just trying to fight retired guys or guys that should be retired, guys that's smaller than him, not in his weight class. And most yeah. of all, not even boxers, really. Like what boxer exactly. has he fought? None. Exactly. Not like, one. And it it's annoying because like now he has this reputation for being a MMA championship killer. But you got to look at the champions that he beat. Let's be honest. Like basketball Mitchell, champion. Mitt he Robinson. also had a basketball champion, so he's got champions under his belt. All three of them champions. I wouldn't mind seeing him fight uh, primetime Tyron, though. Primetime, yes. Not worn out, scared Tyron. What about a current Anderson Silva? I would take it. I want to see that one, but I think he might wait too long, honestly. I'd also love to see him fight Vitor. Oh here's the God. thing. I think I think here's the thing that we had to consider too. We all want to see him lose. But that's that's us. If you think about it, he's got what four fights total? Three. Three fights. That's not that and his opponents aren't that different than a boxer when they first start their career. They're not fighting like best of the best at all. They are fighting other boxers, but most of them are um in the very, very beginning, like in the first three or four fights, they're complete tomato cans, usually. Yeah, but you know what they're doing that Jake Paul's not? Fighting people in his weight class. Fair. Jake Paul walks around at uh, 190 to 200, He's doing and he keeps though. fighting people at like 170, one... I think the biggest one was Tyrone. Oh, yeah, he's fighting 170 years. He's doing something, though. He's fighting former champions of a combat sport that's not boxing right he's doing the underlying thing okay this guy has fought before and they have been good so he could put those highlights on there to hype up the fight that's the thing like the casual fans not going to realize that like oh yeah he just beat this guy that was a champion in this but All right not a champion at box. Why don't he fight? Uh, what's it? What's him call it? Chavez, Chavez Jr. Because, because, the, listen, he would. He, he, the chances are he would lose. Right. They, 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 they're cherry picking. It's a good job they're doing. They're cherry picking all the fights where he would have an edge, and it's hard for him to have an edge over anybody when he's an amateur. Like he's a basically a a prospect when it comes to boxing. So. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't mind it. I, I think it's fine. Like, if you want to keep fighting um, guys who have had a, their careers over from a um, U, UFC or a different sport, oh, I don't care. I don't care if you fight, fight, like Frank Gore. I don't give a shit. Like, go for it. Um, but to, t- to take him serious as a serious combat sport contender, and yeah, you're gonna have to fight some actual boxers that are in your same weight class. But and if as long as it's a circus show that it is. Because all it is is like a little sideshow. You're basically paying for something that you can get on World Star for free. And I'm cool with it. No, I'm cool with his game plan. My my thing is the same reason 
holding true to myself. It's the same reason why I had disdain for like people like Sean O'Malley and shit before. It's, you know, know your lane. If that's what you're going to do and you're going to have your sideshow there, stop acting like you're the greatest combat sport artist or fighter in the world and know where you where you stand. That's all. That's that's my opinion on him. That's the only reason why I do it. And I know he's doing it to get people like me to get riled up and be like, I want to see him lose, so I want to see his next fight. I'm going to watch his next fight because I want to see him lose. But it is what it is. All I'm saying is he's doing a great job of making money and giving other people money for their, their L's. But I wouldn't mind with all the shit that he talks and acting like he's a actual boxer and all this stuff for him to have some legit competition that's in his weight class i don't and mind him trying to push for fighter pay though i don't mind him doing that at all that's one thing i give him credit for yeah he does he i does mean that. yeah okay but if he's gonna push all that and talk all that shit he needs to back that shit up for himself too so yes the headliners of his fights make good a couple million bucks each or whatever. But when the other people on your fight card are still making two grand, fifteen hundred, five grand per fight, and you still talking all that shit, then you need to step up your game too. Make the most or the, the last person on that fight make 150 grand and up from there. Whew. If that's what you want for UFC fighters, you better do that shit for your own pay-per-views. That's, that's that's my backing on it. Like, yeah, headliner, y'all made a couple million. That guy on the bottom, you just shitting on. Yeah, the bottom tier guys are always going to be the lowest paid. That's that's only right. Um, it's it's, it's kind of how it works. You got to build your name a little bit. But you shouldn't be a respected, like, known contender and not making real money. That's all. That's all I feel about the, the fighter pay. Um, my only real issue is with the win bonus. Like, you should get a flat rate for the, for competing in the bout, win or lose. It doesn't matter. Like, if you're making, instead of making it 15 and 15, it should just be 30, period. Yeah, I think that's an outdated system. It made sense back in the day, but it doesn't make any sense now. I think we should get rid of that, go to the flat rate, and bring back the yellow and red cards. Yeah. I don't think anybody's trying harder because, you know, like, they get a bonus. I think they're going to, they want to, both guys want to win no matter what. Is winning and losing is already so significant in each bout. I think the guys that are um, are getting in there, they don't give a fuck about like anything other than winning because the the pain of losing and the financial cost of losing is so hard anyway that I don't I don't think they're incentivized more by getting double the pay at the I mean from that win bonus um, because somebody has to lose and the guy that wins gets bonuses because he moves up in the rankings and he moves up in um the win column it also gets more pay which is cool i mean i like bonuses but i think it should be performance bonuses and not the results you should get paid the same regardless of result in my opinion that's the only issue i really have with, with fighter pay i mean i know it's a company they want to make as much money as possible it is what it is i get it well, the the original reason for it was to incentivize them a little bit more to fight a little harder instead of like people quitting in there or just coasting through. But like I said, I think that's outdated. I think that was more of a when they were first doing it and people just thought these were bar fights anyways. I think it made sense back then, but nowadays... Like you said, people that are doing it nowadays want to be in there. They're competitive people that want to win and, you know, are doing everything they can to win anyways. But to keep the fights exciting, that's why I said we should switch over to back to the yellow cards and the red cards. 
You know, if you have a lackluster fight like Rose versus Carlo, yellow card him. Hey, y'all need to have some action here. Y'all just lost 5% of your purse because here's a yellow card. You know, that'll incentivize them to do a little bit more. Like, and you know, I just, I like that system a lot more. Because obviously it is entertainment, so we don't want to see a fight that's just staring at each other. Exactly. Well, on that note, you guys ready to wrap this one up? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, zip it up. Zip it out. Peace. Zip it, do, bye-bye.